Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I uh, just wanted to do a very quick video. I have a video about EVs and the collapse of EV sales and EV adoption and the reason people aren't doing EVs and all of that kind of stuff for tomorrow. But I wanted to really quick put this video in for today. I think this is very exciting news. It's about Starlink, so didn't really fit with, uh, with the theme of Tesla stuff, so that's why I wanted to do a separate video. Anyway, Elon Musk said today, about six hours ago, excited to announce that SpaceX Starlink has achieved break-even cash flow. Excellent work by a great team. Starlink is also now a majority of all active satellites and will have launched a majority of all satellites cumulatively from Earth by next year. So let's break that down. <laughs> wow, what a massive milestone is what, is what my response was. Uh, basically, what Elon is saying here is that they have their getting in as much revenue as they are spending money right now on Starlink. That is a major and many people thought impossible milestone. So if you don't know, Starlink was designed to get or get SpaceX and get human beings to Mars. That's basically what it was designed to do. So I, I know that seems kind of odd because that's not really what it does. What it does is it provides internet for all of us, including for me. I'm going to be uploading this video to, to uh, YouTube and X based on Starlink. So it works fantastically. And even more importantly than me, because I had I do have other options, there are many people in the world who don't have access to basically any internet. What they might have is something on their phone, which is really, really low speed, like an old 2G type of connection or something like that. For those people, it's not just a convenience and better, but it's a complete world-changing sort of thing that they've got because it by allowing them to have access to high-speed internet, they suddenly go from not having access to the information the rest of the world has to having that access. So that is a huge thing. So it's very good for humanity. It's also very good for uh, but but you know it's very good for humanity that they get this. But for SpaceX and for Sp Starlink specifically, which might be IPOing now in the next year or so, let's hope because I would love to buy into SpaceX in some way. That would be wonderful. But anyway, for for SpaceX in particular, this has been a money loser up till now. So they've spent years launching satellites and losing money on every single satellite launch that they've launched, and building the satellites, putting them into space, even with their reusable rockets, which makes the cost of each launch significant significantly less than it would be if you, I mean, significantly, like orders of magnitude less than it would be if they were having to dump these rockets into the ocean. In fact, if they were having to do that, they couldn't even afford this. And several other companies have looked into this and have realized that it's basically impossible for them to compete with, with SpaceX and Starlink because if they're throwing, Boeing being the latest, by the way, because if you're throwing away the rockets when you're launching them, it's just too expensive. You can't do this. You have to put thousands and thousands of these satellites into orbit. And that means, you know, hundreds at least of launches. And you just can't afford to do that when it costs you a half a billion dollars a launch to put these things into space. It, there's no way to do a break even. So, so SpaceX has figured out a, a, the, a, the sort of cheat code about all of this. They've managed to figure out how to get uh, these these satellites into orbit for less money, how to build them. They're also mass manufacturing these things because, you know, they're doing about two launches a week right now-ish, something like that, sometimes more, sometimes less. But that in order to do that, when they're launching like maybe 40 plus satellites per launch, that means they have to be building on the order of 100 of these satellites per week. So that's mass manufacturing satellites. Nobody has ever done anything like this before. If you look at the history of satellites, uh, Scott Manley just did a recent one. He's done been doing a, a series on communication satellites. And each of those, and this admittedly was the 60s when we're talking about this, but those satellites were you know, super high tech, but they were one off. They were built and they were kind of a single or maybe you'd build two of them because you'd have a backup and then you'd launch the second one later. But nobody has thought about building hundreds or thousands of these satellites. So just the concept of building that big of a constellation of manufacturing these things at the kind of speed that ta that SpaceX is doing, keep wanting to say Tesla, sorry, that the speed that SpaceX is doing this is absolutely astounding. It's it's kind of mind blowing that that SpaceX is able to do this and mass manufacture this so much. But again, just like with their vehicles, the fact that they're manufacturing thousands of these satellites means that they're able to iterate over time. They're able to go like, oh, we see that when we were building this, that the building was not working well because of this, that was, it was, you know, this was the slow part of the, of the construction line, or we could make it more efficient or less power hungry by doing this little trick. So they're on to, you know, multiple generations past the first generation of Starlink satellites. And that has allowed them to build these satellites at a much more 
um, aggressive pace, but also to make them much better and more efficient than they would have been if they were only building a few. So don't underestimate the power of mass manufacture. In fact, actually, Elon was talking to Joe Rogan on his podcast maybe two days ago. I can't remember. How. Anyway, the day that he shot the arrow. But but he was saying that that nobody gives enough credit to manufacture and how much more difficult it is. So for example, here, designing the satellite is one thing. Mass manufacturing that satellite, a whole different thing. And, and it's the same kind of deal that they're doing with cars on a different scale. Instead of millions of, car, of cars, it's thousands of satellites, but still it's a lot. And I believe that there are somewhere around 5,000 um, Starlink satellites in orbit right now. So it's, it's a strike number. But, and that brings us to actually the second sentence here, which is Starlink is also now a majority of all active satellites and will have launched a majority of all satellites, cu satellites cumulatively from Earth by next year. So that means definitely they have more satellites up there than anybody right now. But when he says cumulatively, he means since Sputnik went up in 1957, all the satellites that everybody else on Earth has launched in that amount of time, Starlink will be more of those. <laughs> they will have more of satellites in orbit than all satellites ever launched into orbit ever. And that is a, a, a shocking number when you think about that. So that means I don't know what the, the cumulative number is, but it's got to be in the high single thousands, maybe eight or nine thousand or something like that satellites that have ever been launched. And I assume that includes deep space probes and, and you know, human rated stuff, all of that kind of stuff uh, that that's relatively few anyway. But. If that's true, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but if and when that comes to pass, that is going to be just completely mind-blowing that a single company in just a few years is going to have leapfrogged every single human <laughs> human made thing that was put into space over what is it 60 plus years at this point and and that's that's just a pretty shocking number so these are huge milestones and when i say it's a huge milestone i mean huge milestone <laughs> it's absolutely astounding and then to get back to before we finish here the mars thing so in order for spacex to make the kind of money that they needed independently of government contracts and stuff to get to mars and to put lots and lots of space spacecraft to Mars, right? Elon talks about sending out thousands of, of um, starships to Mars. So not just Falcon Falcons and Falcon heavies, but starships all the way to Mars. That is going to require a massive amount of money to fund this. And a lot of the reason why Starlink was conceived of in the first place was to, in order to generate money for SpaceX to be able to self-fund all of this stuff to get us to Mars. And so the break-even point is a massive announcement. It means that now they will be able to actually earn positive revenue instead of spending money, which means they'll be able to take that cash, put it in their coffers, and utilize that to more aggressively build Starship and create the, the stuff that they need to, to create in order to get people to Mars and then eventually build a colony on Mars. So this is just absolutely huge <laughs> news that's going on here. I think people are like, wow, that's really cool that they've hit a break-even point, but it's it's critically important to SpaceX and to their long-term goal of getting people to Mars. And also, by the way, it helps out people on Earth having high-speed internet and will make people's lives better, especially in places where they are very, very remote. And, you know, people talk about Starlink costing a lot of money. It does cost $120 a month for me to have access in the United States. But I have recently discovered in countries that have lower per capita income, the cost per month is drastically reduced. So what, what SpaceX is doing is they're, you know, essentially uh, helping us relatively well-off people are helping to support people in poorer countries to have access to the internet. And I, you know, it's, it's a kind of philanthropy. It's unintentional. It's not like I meant to do that, but I really appreciate that fact. And I like that they're not pricing it out of the realm of possibility for people who live in remote areas in relatively poor countries. So that's, it's really amazing stuff. So it's a big win for humanity, an incredible win for SpaceX and a win for humans eventually going to Mars and, and taking, <laughs> taking humanity and the, the light of consciousness to another planet. And hopefully that that's the beginning of the science fiction future of us all extending out into the universe. So 
Excellent news, really, really happy. Again, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I think you will find it really interesting, whether you have an EV or not, even if you've never bought one, I, I think you'll find that interesting. And if you have, and you have friends who are like, never gonna buy an EV, well, I think you'll also find the video interesting. So definitely, you know, do the subscribe thing to stay tuned for that if you're interested. In the meantime, amazing stuff again from SpaceX and super, super, uh, I don't know, big congratulations. Don't know what else to say. Everybody have a great night and I'll see you a bit. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.